الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون الحمد لله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وله الحمد في الآخرة وهو الحكيم الخبير وقل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كثين فيه أبدا الحمد لله فاضر السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاثة ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء إن الله على كل شيء قدير الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه من ربه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى صحابته الأخيار وعلى التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يقول الشاعر وإذا النساء نشأن في أمية رضع الرجال جهالة وخمولا ليس اليتيم من انتهى أبواه من هم الحياة وخلفاه ذليلا فأصاب بالدنيا الحكيمة منها وبحسن تربية الزمان بديلا إن اليتيم هو الذي تلقى له أما تخلت أو أبا مشغولا In the name of Allah the beneficent, the merciful, all praises be to the one, the creator and the sustainer of the heavens and the earth. And may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger, Muhammad. I bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is his final messenger. Brothers and sisters, before we start, a couple of important community announcements uh, Dr. Yusuf Salim, one of our congregants here, his mother has passed away. He is a doctor at Alexandria Hospital. Many of you know him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive his mother, uh, to make her last place Jannah, and to make his family have patience and fortitude in this difficult time. Also, Brother Hadi Shukri is having open heart surgery. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him relief and cure and shifa uh, quickly. Uh, our brother Irwan Tantu also had a heart attack. Uh, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa. Uh, he just left the hospital. And our chairman, Dr. Akram, uh, uh, and his wife Nancy were blessed with a daughter, Sama. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make her amongst the righteous and, and to make that family a blessed family and this whole community a blessed community. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an reminds us about our responsibilities to our family. One specific ayah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُدُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاضٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Oh you who have believed. And this is Surah At-Tahreem. In Surah At-Tahreem, it is intended to talk about family affairs, family relationships, right? Because this is starting with the situation of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his own wives. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Oh you who have believed. Protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones, 
over which are appointed angels harsh and severe. They do not disobey Allah in what He commands them, but they are commanded. Tahrim 6. So, juxtaposition to this is another ayah. In Surah at tur ayah 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. And let me read the Arabic. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walladhina amanu wa attaba'athum dhurriyatahum bi imanin alhaqna bihim dhurriyatahum wa ma alatnahum min amalihim min shay'in. And those who believed and whose descendants followed them in faith, we will join with them their descendants. And we will not deprive them of anything of their deeds. Every person for what he earned is retained. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attach us to our families here? If you notice, the ayat of the Qur'an usually address individual taklif. Individual obligations upon each and every one of us. These particular ayat are similar to the ayat that tell us like kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'roof because you enjoin what is good right you are the best of nations because you enjoin what is good this is an ayah where the taklif becomes individual for a communal purpose there are specific obligations upon a believer upon every muslim that you don't just save yourself from hellfire or you don't just enter yourself into paradise that you want to take your brother's hand or your sister's hand and your family's hand and pull them with you if this is not our understanding of our faith and our belief then we have a fault in our understanding let me repeat that again if our understanding of being muslim that I will only save myself and not try to save those around me, there is a fault in my understanding of being Muslim. And the evidence for that is the Prophet Sallallahu beautiful response when the people of Ta'if sent their kids and their ignorant ones to stone him. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was bleeding at his feet. And the angel of the mountain comes and he says, if you so order, لَأَطْبُقْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَخْشَبَيْنِ that I will close the two mountains and destroy the city of Ta'if. But look at the vision of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the mercy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He says لَعَلَّ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ أَصْلَابِهِمْ Maybe, maybe from amongst their progeny, their descendants will come people who say, I believe in Allah. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying this today because I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because yesterday our school board here in Fairfax County voted to not have Eid as a holiday in the school system. Even though Loudoun County, Prince William County, Arlington, Henrico, Richmond, Chesterfield have Eid as a holiday, as a day off. But I'm frustrated because Muslim students are the highest number of absence on the day of Eid. Up to 12 to 15 percent of the school system is absent on the day of Eid. But I know that some of us still keep their children in school because they worry about academics. 
They worry they're going to miss something. What I'm here today to say, brothers and sisters, is this coming Eid, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live through Ramadan and be accepted in our deeds in Ramadan and reach Eid. But this Eid should be a day of celebration where Muslim parents say to their children, you will walk out of school and you will come with me today to the masjid. Because this is the only way that your children will understand the concept of celebrating an important day in the Islamic calendar. If the child feels that school is more important on the day of Eid than being in community, we have a problem. The Prophet ﷺ ordered everybody to come out for the prayers. Everybody. Including women who were not have prayer upon them. They were ordered to go out and join the community for the Eid prayers. So brothers and sisters, the question I have is, how serious are we to pull our families with us? How serious are we to inculcate these traditions, these Muslim traditions, this Muslim identity, this Muslim understanding in our children, in our families? If it is not an active program, then we have a problem. You know, when we pass away, what's our legacy? What's our legacy? When someone passes, what is left? What does the Prophet وسلم, When Ibn Adam, the son of Adam passes, all of their actions are cut, except a few. Right? We know this. Sadaqa jariya, like a, a sadaqa that continually gives, right? Either building a masjid or a library or putting something of use to the community. But one of those things is what we should all strive for. Waladun salih yad'ula. A righteous child that makes dua for them. Will my children make dua for me when I pass away? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد. Brothers and sisters, just being a parent doesn't create relationships. Just saying, I am your dad, I am your mom, you have to listen, doesn't foster understanding, respect, and belief. That comes with spending time in a planned way with your children and your families where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Qu anfusakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we have the ability to plan and make that difference in our families. Prophet sallallahu reminds us Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum masoolun that all of you are a shepherd and all of you are responsible for your flock. And the man is a shepherd in his house. Where are our men? Let us think about that. And think about what our relationship is with our families and our children and what we are doing to instill these values. This last week, I had to deal with a very difficult call from a father who said that my children are going astray. They're doing things that I don't approve of. And this father is involved. 
But he realized when the problem happened that he had to put a plan. Let's not wait for the problem to happen. Let's put a plan in place now. Together, as a community, as a family, and start making a difference in our children, in our families' lives. I love that I see Hussein with us today. MashaAllah, may Allah preserve him and elevate him and, and bless his health. But I need to see Hussein's son, Ibrahim, and I need to say, see Hussein's grandson in the masjid, inshaAllah. And Brother Faraj, the same thing. I, see, I saw Muhammad somewhere here in the masjid. But the same thing, we need to see that connection and that only comes with a programmed approach from us as parents. That is planned. It doesn't come by bringing home dollars and giving gifts. It doesn't come by putting food on the table. Allah will bring the risk. Allah yabsutu rizqa liman yasha wa yaqdir. Allah will give and spread the wealth to whoever He wishes. Our investment are our children. Our legacy are our children. Inshallah, we have Ramadan coming. Let's make sure we invest in inculcating these values in our children and our families. Let's make it together where we get up for Fajr together as a family and say we're going to have suhoor together, maybe eat something together and for iftar we eat together. Let's have a program. I personally challenge my kids. Whoever can memorize or whoever can read a certain surah, I give a gift. There's a challenge in our family about this. Let's figure out ways to get our children and our families engaged so that Ramadan becomes a time where we have change happen. Spiritually, mentally, physically, and community. So what are the practical number one? Start with understanding the ayat of the Quran. Today we recited Surah At-Tur, Ayah 17, and Surah At-Tahreem, Ayah 6. Go back and look at these surah. Look at these ayat. Understand what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is asking. Number two. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., I've invited the school board of Fairfax County, Ricardi Anderson to speak to our community about changes happening in kids' schools here in this area. If you have a child in any of the schools that are local, either Glen Forest or Bailey's or Sleepy Hollow or Justice, all these schools, if you have a child in those schools, please go to the office. I need to see 50 brothers and sisters tomorrow to show this school board chair that the Muslims care about their kids. You know what she told me? She told me all of the parents from a specific race showed up with their kids and I don't see any of the minority parents. She told me that. And we have to show that we care about our kids, that when decisions are being made that we will say, no, we ex don't accept this. Your child may be transferred from one school to another if you're not involved. What's going to happen? So tomorrow at 7, please get the details from Yusuf. It's a Zoom meeting. It'll only take an hour. But invest that hour in understanding what is happening in your kids' lives. And number three. This week, make a family Ramadan plan. What is the family Ramadan plan for this week? Or this coming year, sorry. Put a plan of hifth or or, 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 or qira'ah, right? Reading Qur'an. Put a plan for what we're going to do. Maybe not all of us are going to pray taraweeh. Some of us will pray. But put a plan for that. If you're not coming to the masjid, pray four rak'ahs at home with your family. But put a plan in place 
so that the family together feels like they're coming together for Ramadan. So number one, Surah At-Tur and Surah At-Tahrim. Number two, the program tomorrow at seven. Number three, to, uh, uh, make a plan for Ramadan as a family together, inshaAllah. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, as you know, the masjid is still gonna do the iftar program. It's $195 to uh, uh, feed one fasting person for the whole of Ramadan. So if you want to be involved in that barakah, inshaAllah, uh, please go ahead and see the brothers in the office. It's $195 for the whole month of Ramadan. Also, before I conclude, a brother came to me before the khutbah he lost his job recently. He works in sales. If any of you know a job opening or availability in sales, please see me in the office after the khutbah. Maybe we can help this brother and you can get uh, barakah uh, for doing so. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this community. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach Ramadan and make us of those who are forgiven in Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring blessings on our children, on our families, and make them righteous families and righteous children, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us all on the day of resurrection in Jannat al Naim. In Allahu Malaik to you salun ala nabiya ya yu aladina aminu salu alayhi wa salimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salli ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barak ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alamina inna ka hamidun majid wa aqim salat.